Okay, so I'm slowly reorganizing the shelves over here by my little uh, computer workstation that's in the living room between the kids' room and, you know, the living room. That's the neighbor's dog that never shuts the fuck up. Um, anyway, so I'm finally sitting down and trying to start the intimidating hard work of figuring out all my mom's different bank accounts and I'm doing a video. Um, go ahead. I'm just saying I'm doing, I started doing daily vlogs again. Um, sort of like a diary entry. Um, anyway, so, um, I, I started making phone calls and of course everything is an extra layer of confusing and, or not just confusing, but difficult because of COVID still, you know, it's still a thing. Um, but it's just it, a lot of it I can't do until the death certificate comes and I'm not sure how much longer that'll be. I'm trying to, you know, at least do a little bit each day during the kids nap time. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> for some reason, my mom still she consolidated some of her accounts over the years, but she still has one through Citibank and one through Chase and one through Wells Fargo. And I think there's like another one out there, too. And like she was very weird about paying bills and stuff. She's, she was very anti like setting up something for automatic withdrawal. She would always manually write a check using, you know, that bill pay thing from the bank to the people, you know, whatever the company is. And I hate that <laughs> for one thing, like the checks usually take several weeks to get out. So, you know, you have to plan ahead of that. And also like, what if the amount changes, you know, like she just, she was so weird because she would send the check out and sometimes they send a message saying that it needed more money. So she'd have to write a second check with more money or they would send the extra money back. Like it's just, but you know, she was in her 70s, 74, I believe. And older people have ideas about how, you know, online banking and stuff works. So, and you know, data does get breached. There's, there's like data breaches all the time. But at least, you know, if there is a data breach, then the companies, you know, I keep saying, you know, <laughs> the companies can uh, work with you, will work with you. Uh, it's obviously if money suddenly disappears to, you know, a completely separate city or something, they're going to be like, huh. Um, but yeah, it's just it's it's frustrating and intimidating that everything is so complicated still. And I know. Part of it is that, you know, at, especially at the end, she was very tired easily and her eyesight was going and it, it was hard to, even with me there, to sit down and figure everything out. She would get testy and kind of defensive at like any question I asked. And she, she has multiple briefcases just full of random assorted papers. And I would try to sit down and kind of make sense of the papers with her and she would get frustrated that I didn't understand stuff that she understood, but she had her own, you know, she was familiar with that information. So to her, something was obvious, but to me, I had no idea what that was. And she would refer to stuff just with like her own made up um, name of the company or something, but she wouldn't tell me what it was. And so, and she wouldn't say like, oh, I have, you know, uh, checking with this company and savings with this company and blah, 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 blah. And then she has different amounts going in and out of the different accounts. Like she has my dad's social security going into one account, but then she has the internet, which, you know, she, they weren't paying rent, but they were paying for most of the food and they're paying the internet, um, coming out of a different account. <laughs> um, Matthew actually got really frustrated. We were talking, I think it was, it was later last night or the night before, but he was getting really frustrated because my mom's had can had cancer for 15 years and she knew that she was dying and some progress was made towards consolidating some of her accounts but it also just it could more could have been done <laughs> and one of the the last times i went up with her to work on files with her she got so testy and it was like i've been trying to get you to do this all year and it's like I have the kids to watch. I hate doing stuff like this. And every time I sit down with you and try to do it, you get all, all flustered and defensive and just, <sighs> cause as I've mentioned before, my mom made many questionable investments over the years and she's very testy. She was, was very testy. 
uh, about it because she knew that my dad and I knew that they were scams and we tried to tell her that they were scams and she would just get defense and in, defensive and insist that we just, you know, thought she was stupid and, and didn't want her to succeed. All this, all this weird stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just, it's intimidating. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to, I'm going to start it. I, I try to like whip myself up and be like, okay, today, this is my task list. I'm going to do this and this and this. But it's just such a confusing, nebulous thing. And uh, So I saw a thing a while ago. I can't remember if it was a tweet or what. But basically it was just someone saying, do your family a favor and don't have just piles of stuff, shit for them to go through. Don't have, you know, I don't know, antiques and stuff like that. If you know you're dying, do your family a favor and get rid of a lot of that stuff. My mom has a lot of random papers and stuff and I it's it's funny because I'm in the middle where my mom would keep literally every paper forever from everybody like she still has boxes of paperwork from her mom dying which was like a decade ago <laughs> and for some reason my mom basically took over doing all that stuff even though she has you know five siblings I mean four siblings she is the fifth um, for some reason, she's the one that took over all doing all the, the financial stuff. Um, and then even my parents' friend who died, uh, they found his body three days later because he was such a hermit that literally no one even knew he was dead until, I don't know if it was the smell or what. But anyway, for some reason, she took over uh, doing a lot of stuff like that for him, even though he has a sister. And the sister got all the money, got the insurance and got, you know, sold the house and gave my mom like a pittance. Uh, for literally doing all the cleaning in this, this house. And he was a hoarder, uh, for all sorts of random, random things. And it was disgusting. And there's like literally a, a level of grime shoulder high from how disgusting his, his house was. And she took over cleaning and did all the financial stuff and then got a pittance while the sister, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. My mom, it's always been frustrating growing up, watching my mom bend over backwards to help Basically, everyone outside of the immediate family, she would always do it for her brothers and sisters, especially one one certain brother, the youngest in the family, who is basically, you know, lazy pothead who, for some reason, good things keep happening to. People keep giving him houses and cars and stuff. It's just, there is no, there is no karma in the world. Um, and she would just do all this stuff for him. Like, she bought a uh, admitted, you know, kind of piece of shit RV when we first moved up here and she had this plan of driving the RV up here and it was barely, you know, barely ran or whatever. But when they did move up here, she just gave it to this brother. And ugh. anyway, she would always go above and beyond for all these other people, for her brothers and sister, for her mom, for the family friend and stuff like that. But my dad and I, like, she was just so argumentative and would just kind of belittle whatever we wanted just, yeah it was just weird it was weird because I felt like she put all her empathy and whatever into other people and it was just really harsh to my dad and me um and I still don't really feel any sort of sadness over her dying and it you know I've been proselytizing not proselytizing philosophizing on Twitter mostly about it and everyone's like, you know, everyone grieves in their own way and don't feel like you have to grieve a certain way, but <sighs> I don't know. I, I think part of it is, well, it's like three parts. One is that it's been a really long time coming. She's been sick for a really long time and yeah, you know, she would get healthier some days and then worse other days, but it has been a long process of sort of waiting for the roller coaster to start going down. As I said, the other part of it is that we had a very difficult relationship and, you know, I really started to look at her differently when I had the kids and she uh, got a lot more maternal and I'm about to run out of recording time. So I guess I'll, I'll cut this short in just a second. I was just going to say, and the third thing that might be a factor is that I had a best friend die suddenly in 2009 and I like scream cried and then I was over it. And someone suggested on Twitter that because that already happened to me, maybe I'm more accustomed to dealing with death. I don't know. Anyway, see you in tomorrow's video.